Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're continuing on with our file upload implementation. Towards the end of the previous video we created a file mover which we defined as a Symfony service to allow us to move uploaded files from wherever PHP is storing them into a location that we control and that location is going to be our web images directory. Now at this point we need a way to trigger this process and the way in which I'm going to do this is to use Doctrine's lifecycle events. Because we're going to need that file mover when this process takes place, I'm going to have to use a lifecycle event listener. And you may have heard of things like lifecycle callbacks before. This is slightly different and the reason for doing it this way is to allow us to inject services. However, if any of that doesn't make sense, then don't worry about it. There's really no prerequisite knowledge required at this point. So before I jump into the implementation, I want to show you where I'm getting this idea from. So even though this is a project for Symphony 3, for the longest time in Symphony 2, we quite heavily relied on the cookbook. And even though this article only goes up to Symphony 2.6, this is a method that I've used a number of times and works quite well. There are some downsides to it as we'll discuss as we go through. Now I'm not going to skim the entire document as it's quite long with a lot of example code in there. The idea behind what we're about to do is to hook into the process just before an entity is saved off to the database for the first time, which would be the pre-persist event, or when we've made changes to an existing entity, making sure that the information available on that entity is up to date and for that we would use the pre-update event. All of this becomes clearer as we go through. It is worth pointing out, however, that if we look inside the Easy Admin Bundle controller that powers all of the process for our Easy Admin backend, there is an action in here called the new action. And as part of this, a bunch of events are dispatched as well. So you can see pre new, pre persist, post persist, and post new. And in some ways, I feel it would be a better idea to listen for these events rather than tie ourselves directly to doctrine. But the downside to doing this is if we implement our listeners purely for the easy admin events, then if we were to later use a different type of uploader, for example, if we were to allow our end users to do uploads, then we would end up either duplicating quite a lot of logic, or as I see it in my head, we would probably end up migrating towards using the doctrine events anyway. But I may be wrong on this, so I'm just sort of thinking ahead and trying to use my best judgment. So the way I'm going with this is that I've read this cookbook article and it's influenced my design decisions. And from this, I know that I'm going to need some sort of listener to hook into these pre-persist and pre-update events. Now this listener is going to need access to our file mover. And as this is potentially going to get complex, I'm going to use PHP spec to guide me through the process. So I'm creating a new class under the app bundle event listener directory structure, but you are of course completely free to use whatever structure you like. Now, as we saw in the previous video, at this point we could run our tests and PHP spec will go ahead and create me this wallpaper upload listener as it doesn't yet exist. The thing is, if I just do a PHP vendor bin PHP spec and then run, it's going to run all my tests. I don't really want that. I just want to focus on the one thing that I'm working on currently. So the command changes slightly here. We need to pass in the full path to the spec that we want to run. And as it's the only spec that lives inside the event listener subdirectory, I can just hit tab a few times and it'll do it for me there. And then I can run that through. And as you can see, it's this time it's only running a single test and it wants to go ahead and create that file for me, which I'm going to allow it to do. Okay, so let's jump back into our project. I can get rid of the admin controller there. Let's close that all off. Open up the spec and the source directories and let's just get these files opened up. Now, typically the way I would play this is to split this. So split it vertically, close that one down. And because I'm working on such a small screen space, just to make sure that the font's legible for you, I'm going to close down the sidebar as well. So I don't know if there's a set convention for the naming of your methods inside the upload listener, but what I do is I just call the methods the same name as the event that we're listening for. So in our case, we've got a pre-persist and a pre-update method. So even though I'm going to do this backwards, as in I'm going to write some code first, not the tests, I think it just helps with the learning of this process. Now, as it happens, both of these methods will get given one argument when they are called. So when our pre-persist event is called, this will get given a lifecycle event args object, which I'll just call event args. And pre-update gets a slightly different object, which is the pre-update event args. And the question that you might have at this point is how did I know that these events get given those particular arguments? And it's because I found them in the documentation, which I've linked to in the show notes. So what these arguments do is they give me options. There's various things available on these event args. So if we just do a quick potential function, 
we can see all the different things that are available to us. And because it's the pre-update event args, we get them slightly different to what's available in the lifecycle event args. So what you can do at each step just differs slightly. I'm going to get rid of that for the moment. And what I'm going to do is just write two very quick tests to help us kickstart this process. So these tests are going to need to be completely refactored. The names aren't great. And we're not really testing anything properly at this point. I'm really just doing some setup. So each of these method calls expects to be given the respective arguments. And for the moment, I'll just use a collaborator as we've seen already. And at this point, we should be able to run those tests and we can and they all pass. In order for PHP spec to guide us through the process, we need to tell it what we expect to happen. Now in both of these cases, both pre-persist and pre-update, assuming a new wallpaper has been added, then the process is going to be identical. So I'm just going to concern myself with the happy path at this point, and I'm only going to work on the it can pre-persist test. And the reason for that is that the pre-update test should be identical and there's really no point doing it twice. So we saw in the previous video how we expect the file mover to be given some temporary path and then the path that we actually want to move our data to. And that concept's going to be used by the wallpaper upload listener. So I'm going to add that as a concept into my test and it's not going to work at this point, but that's the whole purpose of doing this process. And the concept that I'm going for is that after pre-persist has been called, then inside the wallpaper upload listener, I would expect our file mover to have been called as well. So I'd expect that move method to have been invoked. So let's add that into our test as well. So we'll say this file mover, which doesn't exist as a concept as of yet, so don't worry about that. But move should have been called with our fake temp path and our fake real path. So again, just like in the previous set of tests, what we had to do to begin with is use that let function to ensure that each of our tests was set up properly. And what I'm going to do is add in the let function. I'm going to say this, if we need a file mover, then we've got to inject it. So we'll say this be constructed with and we'll say we're going to inject our file mover, which again doesn't exist as a concept just yet. So we'll say, please inject as a file mover, which now exists. And then we will want access to that in our test a little later on. So we'll need to store it as a private property on this test spec or test class. So we'll say this file mover is equal to that file mover. And then we'll set it as a private property on this class. Okay, so what we should expect now is that when we run the tests, PHP spec is going to notice that this be constructed with expects to be given something and our class doesn't have a constructor. So nothing's been injected. So we should expect this to fail. So let's give it a shot. So it fails and it says, would you like me to create a construct function for me? Yes, I would. It's very nice of you. And then it says, obviously, we've still got some fails because that file mover is not being invoked. Let's just clear that off. Check what's happened here. So even though PHP spec's giving us this sort of concierge service, we've still got to help it along a little bit. It's decided that we're going to need a constructor, but the argument that it's given has not got the type hint. So let's sort that out. And I'll just alt and return on that to initialize the fields. Again, I can run the tests. Nothing should have changed at that point because we've still not done that file move process. Now, unlike in our file mover test, if we just open that back up, we had direct access to our variables. And when we called move, we could just pass them in and everything went to plan. But unfortunately, inside our pre-persist and pre-update methods, we're not going to be directly passing in this temp and real path. We're going to need to get them from somewhere. And in my opinion, that somewhere becomes one of the most confusing parts of testing to begin with. But once you get it, it's sort of like a light bulb moment or an aha moment. But that's going to be the focus of the very next video.